Uh, the double slit diffraction, uh, which I covered in another video, uh, you have two slits. Light is coming in phase, passing through the two slits, and then diffracting off in various directions. And we want to know where is it going to be constructive, where is it going to be destructive? Well, if it's going off at an angle theta, checking whether that's going to be constructive or destructive, we use the formulas d sine theta equals m lambda for constructive, and we use d sine theta equals m plus a half lambda for destructive. For the single slit, it's actually the other way around. The constructive is at m and a half lambda, and the destructive is at m lambda instead. Uh, there's a couple of details to get straight on that. So first of all, the double slit has a spacing small d. d sine theta is the path difference. For this one, if we imagine it as a double slit where we knocked out the middle wall, the gap is big D. Big D sine theta is the path difference between the two edges. Now, there's not just two beams anymore. There are lots and lots of beams. I made a video using Desmos to describe what happens when we add up all of these waves together. Here in Desmos, I'm typing in uh, m equals sine x, n equals sine of x minus 0.5, p equals sine of x minus 1. In other words, I'm adding a whole bunch of phases together. If, as I continue to add these, you can see that this is getting thicker and thicker, and if I kept at it all the way through a complete cycle, everything would be canceling out. If I did the grand total of all of these, if I kept going, you'd get a completely flat line. So having one wave difference would actually be destructive. So you see, when you add up this wave, and 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 so on, if these are uh, one entire wavelength or a whole number of wavelengths apart, you're going to get destructive interference because you have every possible phase and they all cancel each other out. So d sine theta equals m lambda will be destructive unless m is zero, because if m is zero, the light's going straight through, you get a maximum. All the light is in phase, hitting the middle. So, except m equals zero. And then for the constructive, what we actually want is half of the phases. At this point, halfway through, I add up the waves with all of these phases. Only half of the phases though, and you see that it adds up to a large amplitude overall. So you get constructive interference when half of the phases are there. But d sine theta to equal m plus one half lambda for constructive interference in a single slit.